Let's head to the year 2051 to help save mankind. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome back to my channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. And today we're going to talk about a brand new film that just dropped last Friday, July 2nd on Amazon Prime. And that film is the new Chris Pratt action sci-fi film, The Tomorrow War. This film was acquired by Amazon for $200 million from Paramount Pictures. This was supposed to be a theatrical release, but due to the pandemic last year, Paramount sold the rights off to Amazon for $200 million when they dropped it last Friday. This film is directed by Chris McKay. Chris McKay had directed the Lego Batman film, which I do like that film. My son loves it. We saw it in the theaters. And he directed a few TV shows before that, so this is his first big live-action film. And, of course, Chris Pratt plays Dan Forrester. He's ex-military family man with a nine-year-old daughter and he lives in the suburbs and he is a school teacher now and he's trying to better himself and get a better job which we see in the beginning of the film unfortunately he doesn't get that job Yvonne Strahovski plays Colonel Miri Forrester and we'll talk about her in a little bit the great J.K. Simmons plays Dan Forrester's father James Forrester and they have a rocky relationship we'll talk about that Betty Gilpin plays Chris Pratt's character's wife in this film Emma or Emmy and she was in The Hunt, and she's fantastic in that film. If you've never seen The Hunt, check it out. And Sam Richardson plays Charlie. He is one of the people that get drafted into this war that Dan Forrester meets along the way, and they become good friends, and he is awesome in this film. I've never seen him before. I like, Although he was in Weird Millers, I probably saw him there, but I don't remember him. He's great in this film. Edwin Hodge plays Doreen. He is also somebody who got drafted to go into this war. But this is, by the time Chris Pratt's character meets him, he's on his third tour going back into the war. And he's always great whenever he shows up. He was in the Invisible Man movie, and uh, he was in the first uh, Purge movie, and he's been um, Jack Reacher 2. Whenever he shows up, he's always fantastic, and he's fantastic here. Now, being in this film, we see Chris, we see Chris Pratt in the future falling out of the sky and landing in a pool, and then we jump back 20 years into the past. It's Christmas time. Chris Pratt is getting home. Chris Pratt's character is getting home from the grocery store. They're having a Christmas party, and he finds out some very bad news that he didn't get the job he's been trying to get to better his situation in life. Um, and he sits down on the couch with his daughter and his wife, and they have some interactions, and they're watching a soccer game. And right away, we're thrust into the situation. Right in the middle of the soccer field, this wormhole opens up, and these people walk through, and this one woman gives this speech about how they're from the future, 30 years in the future, or 28, depending if you want to do some math. Rich, I know you will. And there's a war going on with this alien species and there's less than 500,000 humans left and they need the present day people to come into the future and help fight this war or the human race is going to be extinct by the time we get to this 2030 or 2031. Um, and that is pretty much the crux. Now Chris Pratt's character thinks he's safe because they're supposed to be, if you're ex-military and you're a school teacher, you're supposed to be not have, you're supposed to not have to go. Well, of course, he gets drafted or we want to have a film. His wife doesn't want him to go. She wants to run, and she, uh, she insists that he go sees his father, who he's estranged from, to see if he can get this arm bandage put on your arm that helps you time jump back and forth between the two time periods. And they, they explain the time travel thing a little bit. They don't focus on it a whole lot. They kind of explain it, and they move on from it. Um, there's this machine that they developed that was able to take you from present day to the future, but you can't hop around in time. It's just to that point in time that it is at that point and back to where you came from, and that's it. They kind of explain it a little bit. There's some plot holes with it, but if you just go with it, it's, it's, it's fine. They don't linger on the time travel aspect at all. This isn't back to the future or Terminator. And he goes sees his father, and we see that they have a strained relationship. His father is an ex-Vietnam vet, and he left Dan and his mom when he was younger, and Dan holds resentment and won't let him see his daughter, but he's asking him for help. They kind of get into an argument, and Dan leaves and says, you're never, not going to get a second chance. And he goes home and explains to his wife that he's going to go into war. It's for seven days you go. It's your tour, and you come back. And he goes, I'm pretty tough. I can do it. I've been in war before, and he goes. And the, the special effects are pretty well done. You can tell they had some money behind this film. Um, at some points, the CGI doesn't look the greatest, but for the most part, it, it's pretty good. Um, and it shows them landing in Miami, the coordinates get messed up, and they land in the pool on top of this high-rise. 
Unfortunately, for some of the people that got time jump, they land off of land into the street and die or land into some other structures. And this is where we first see the monsters or the aliens that we, they're up against during this film. And they get sent by this Colonel Miri, who is, he doesn't know at the time, is Dan's daughter in the future, to go to this research facility, their last one left, and re get the people, the researchers, out and this test these vials that they've been working on, a way to kill these aliens with a poison to retrieve those. Well, Dan takes the people that are left and goes to this building, and all the researchers are dead, but he does get the vials, and they basically got to, this is what starts our first major action set piece, they got to get their asses out of the area because they're gonna bomb. They're gonna drop a bunch of bombs with um, fighter jets, and Me Colonel Miri keeps telling them, "You got to get out, got to get out of there, get out of there." And we first see the aliens, which the alien design. I really like the alien design. It's pretty unique. Um, I, I like it. It's a pretty suspenseful scene as well, and it's a really well done action scene. It's well staged, and the effects come off. The creature effects come off really, really well. I got to be honest. I was really impressed with the alien design and how they pulled it off. And I understand they did do some practical effects for the aliens um, as well, because Chris Pratt had um, posted a picture on Instagram with an actual, they built the aliens for certain scenes. Obviously there's a lot of CGI in here as well, but I was happy to know that they actually did build it for real and for some scenes. And they eventually get extracted, but only some of them make it out and they wake up and then he's, he meets his daughter and she doesn't want to give him too much information because before he went, he found out that he got killed. He died in 2030, before the war, but he doesn't know how. And they were picking people to go in a draft that are over, that were dead before the future. Um, they do bring that up and they talk about it a little bit. And basically, they're trying to catch a female, the main female, to do tests on her to see if they can develop a poison. Because they have developed a poison that kills the males, but it won't kill the females. So that's the crux of it, and that's why she brought her dad into the future to help her try to develop a poison that will take care of the females as well. And they catch the female, get her back to their main base that's out in the middle of the ocean. Things go awry, or we wouldn't have the rest of this movie. Chris Pratt gets time jumped. He sees his daughter get basically killed before he goes, and he's back in present time. And he hands over the serum that will kill them so they can mass produce it and go back. But unfortunately, by this point, the time travel is not possible because the machine got destroyed. So there's some people from the future still stuck in the present and they come up with this idea that these creatures had to be here before because there was never any satellite signature of a, a ship crashing. All they know is that they appeared out of Northern Russia off the ice shelf and started wreaking havoc. So between him, between Dan, his wife, Charlie, and Dorian, they figure out that a ship must have crashed, a spaceship must have crashed in northern Russia, and they got frozen, and then when they thawed out, that's when they appeared and started killing the humans, um, killing off the human race. So they go to Russia, they talk his, he talks his father into taking and find him into Russia, they find the spaceship, and they blow it up, and they kill the final female. Everybody dies except for Dan, his father, and Charlie. And we have a, a happy ending, although they didn't announce yesterday they're going to make a sequel, which I think is pretty cool. I'd like to see a sequel. Overall, this film did everything I want out of a summer blockbuster. There's, there's some cool action set pieces, for sure. They're well shot by Chris McKay. Um, Chris Pratt is likable as always, and um, I always like Chris Pratt as an actor. I didn't ever saw him on Parks and Rec because I don't watch much TV, but I've seen him, you know, Gardens of the Galaxy 1 and 2, Jurassic World, Jurassic World 2. Um, any film that he's showed up in, I've always enjoyed Chris Pratt's performances, and he's just as likable here as the everyman that gets thrust in this crazy situation. Um, all the actors do great across the board. Yvonne Skrowski does great as his older daughter, and there's some really touching scenes between them in the future and when she dies, obviously, for him. J.K. Simmons is a beast in this movie. He kicks ass. I wish he was on screen a little bit more. And I love his chemistry with Chris Pratt. They're great together. Betty Gilpin's awesome here. I mean, she doesn't get a whole lot to do, but but she is great in her role. And Sam Richardson and Ellen Hodge are fantastic, and so are the other actors that play the soldiers in the future. The acting here is really well done, and there's some comedy there, as you expect from a Chris Pratt vehicle, but not always from Chris Pratt. Sam Richardson has some really funny lines, and he's very entertaining. And Ellen Hodge plays more of the serious soldier, although he does lighten up towards the end of the film. But he's more of the serious man who, who thinks that this, none of this shit matters and we're all going to die anyway. 
and he just wants to die his way, which he may, he might, and he might not. I'll let you see for yourself if you haven't seen this film. I don't want to spoil everything. I just spoiled a ton. I don't want to spoil everything. Now, I, like again, there's some great emotional scenes between Chris Pratt's character and his daughter, the young daughter and the older daughter, and him and his wife. And I really appreciated that. They did stop to have those moments, but they don't stop too long. There is a lot of action throughout this film, especially that first encounter with the aliens and then the siege or the raid on the main base when the aliens show up to, to save the female. That sequence goes on for quite a bit and it's very well done. Um, so with some spectacular special effects and it's well shot. And you know, towards the end, the, la the final set piece is really well done as well. I was thoroughly happy with this film. It entertained me. Um, I think the acting's really well done. I think it's well directed. I think the effects for the most part come off really well. And it's everything I want in a summer, a summer, not a summer, a summer blockbuster film. It's, these are the kind of films that reminds me of something from the 90s. Um, definitely the 90s blockbuster films, it has that vibe. There's definitely some serious parts to this, but there's also some comedy, like I said. Now, there are negative, some negatives here about the film. There are gaps in the logic. You could pick this film apart if you really wanted to. I was along for the ride. I noticed those gaps. I ignored them and went along with the story and the characters that I I, I enjoyed being around, so it didn't bother me as much. But the more you think about it, there's some dumb aspects that don't make a whole lot of sense. When they have the female alien back at this base, they're telling they, they um, Emma or Miri tells her father that they are keeping it sedated. But then it's almost like they forget to sedate the monster, and it wakes up and calls out to the other ones, and that's when they come and take over the base and kill everybody. But Dan gets out because he time jumps. So little things like that, and even at the end, when they develop the serum, they take with them the Russian when they find the alien spaceship in the ice, they start injecting the ones in these pods, and they start dying so they know the serum works, but then at the end, they end up blowing the ship up anyway to kill the rest of them because there's a lot more in the back. It's like, why don't you just blow it up to begin with instead of trying to go to each one and injecting with this stuff and waking them up? Those kind of gaps in logic will drive you nuts if you... If you definitely, if you think about them too much or let them, if you're not having fun with the movie, if you're already not enjoying it, it's probably going to take you out. For me, I was having so much fun with these characters and the story. I let it go. I mean, there's always going to be some dumb things in a summer blockbuster, but I appreciate it. I didn't try to preach to you about anything. It was just a straight up sci-fi action film where the humans had to figure out a way to stop this alien race from wiping out the whole human population. And I was thoroughly on board for the whole thing. I enjoyed it. I plan on watching it again this weekend because I enjoyed it that much. Have you seen it tomorrow or yet? Leave a comment down below. Let me know. I would give this film an 8 out of 10. I enjoyed it that much. It's a really fun summer blockbuster with some really fun characters, some good acting, some cool special effects, and some cool action set pieces, which what else could you want from a summer blockbuster? And Chris Pratt leads this thing, and his chemistry with everybody on screen is great. And I think he's great in this film. So yeah. 8 out of 10 for the Tomorrow War. Have you seen it yet? Again, leave a comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are in this film. Hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, share this video. You would appreciate that. Fear Street Part 2 drops tonight on Netflix, or already dropped today on Netflix. I'm going to check that out over this weekend. I'm going to have a review up on Monday, probably, or Tuesday the latest for that. But until then, I hope you all have a great weekend, and I'll see you soon. Bye.